Someone donated money for the new Kings and Generals video today, courtesy to Anony Man who gifted this reaction. You guys know I hate reactions and I always just react to when, when people like gift subs for it. In the first month of 2024, we observed the continuation of the trends of the past three to four months as the unprovoked Russian invasion of Ukraine. Con I always like how he says unprovoked. I love the guy. That's Giga Chat shit. Continues. Russia has the initiative. It is attacking at different levels of intensity on most front sectors. Even though the Russian army's Dude, they're always in the, they're almost in the next man. Damn. And it's offensive underwhelming. Putin remains confident of his long game. Welcome to the January 2024 update from Let's the take war a look, in man. Ukraine. This guy's better than any journalist, man. He's so much better than the news of uh, uh, explaining what's going on, man. Cold and very, very well winter done. weather is making its mark on the battlefield. It decreases visibility for drones, which have become extremely important in Ukraine. It causes malfunction of vehicles and military equipment. It makes the lives of soldiers miserable, lowering their morale. The Russians are putting pressure on the Ukrainian defenses on almost all sectors of the front. The Avdivka stronghold remains the key goal of its current... It just got lost though, like yesterday they lost it, right? But I think that's a victory for Ukraine. Cope, cope, cope. The KD was so massive, Russia invested so much there. I saw the videos, have you seen these videos? The real life battle footage, where they leave wounded soldiers in the ground and stuff, and they just walk into uh, MG fire and shit. It's so crazy, bro. As a crucial stepping stone for further offensive operations. Uh, it's it's so crazy how the Russian army doesn't Heavy recognize that. <laughs> like, what the fuck? In the south of Avdivka, north of Vodiana, around Stepova, Novobak Mativka, and Novokalinova. The biggest achievement of the Russian army in January in the Avdivka sector was the capture of the Saska Ohota restaurant, turned into a stronghold by the Ukrainian a restaurant. army in the south. Both Ukrainian. Could imagine that was your restaurant once, man. Now you're a fucking important point in a, in a war, man. And Russian sources reported about an operation by Russian military intelligence, which moved through underground pipes for two kilometers to emerge behind the backs of the Ukrainians. This was followed by the Pyatnashka Brigade and the 10th Tank Regiment, solidifying well Russian control over this stronghold, which has withstood Ukrainian counterattacks as of early February. In the back well section, done, a slow Russian advance has largely turned into a positional battle as well. The Russian army has gained some ground in Bodinivka and around Klitschivka, but this progress has been minimal. Elsewhere in Donbass, Russia has been trying to develop yeah. its advance following the capture of Mariinka, which is one of the main political goals of Russia in this war at this point. They got A similar situation has developed on the North Luhansk front as well. The Russians have been attacking here since the summer of 2023, but their advance has been minimal. They have been trying to capture Sinkivka with an aim to advance on Kupiansk later. But the Ukrainians have been repulsing the vast majority of Russian attacks taking advantage of the high ground on the left bank of the Oskil. The Russians have been losing a lot of equipment on this axis. Further south, the Russian army captured the villages of Krokmalna and Tabaivka. I just wonder how Russia can keep this up, right? Infinite equipment and manpower, bro. But They're totally cheating. This is progress considering the losses the Russians have suffered here. For months, battles have been going on around the PO7 highway, the Zherebets River and the Serebriansky forest. On the Zaporizhia front, the back and forth between the two sides in the Robotina salient continues. There has not been any significant movement in this area since the completion of the Ukrainian counteroffensive. It has decisively turned into a secondary front of the war in Ukraine at this point. There have been no significant they have to changes in Kriki either. Russian the front line is so big, right? Times like when he like zooms in like this, you realize how fucking big this war is. Ukraine playing on very hard. <laughs> they were on the brink of capturing the Ukrainian bridgehead but the Ukrainian Marines are still in control of Krinky. Still, they have yet to properly expand the Green bridgehead skin and face non -stop Oh, that's that bridgehead they were building, yeah. ...fire, shelling and attacks. According to the Ukrainian military intelligence chief, Kirill Budinov, the Russian winter offensive, which has been going on for two and a half months, has the goal to reach the administrative borders of Donetsk and Luhansk blasts, but needless to say, they are far from reaching this goal. Yeah, Russia probably wants uh, Luhansk and Donetsk. No, what is that South thing? They probably want this shit so they can start negotiating and annex uh, that shit. At this moment, Budinov argues that the Russian offensive will be exhausted by spring. But many others... Act is there official sources of many Russians died in Advika? Russians lost 30,000 people and 400 tanks in the Battle of Advika. I've seen videos, man. Like, and these were real videos. They looked very, very real. And did the Russians just run in? They just run in like maniacs. No cover, nothing. They just run in. Actually, literal literal mass assault, man. Mass assault tactics. Of its operations. 
The Financial Times even argues that the Russians might attack the Hez- And I always watch these like videos where of the real war where they film themselves in trenches and every time a Russian gives up, it's like an old man. It's like, oh, I'm prisoner. Putin say I become free if I fight. It's always like old men. Sano blast at Kyiv once again. Others expect them to target Kharkiv, which is mere kilometers away from the Russian border. Putin stated on January 31st that one of the aims of the Russian army is to create a so-called cordon sanitaire zone on the Russo-Ukrainian border in order to prevent the Ukrainians from launching drones and missiles on Russian border towns. Meanwhile, the Ukrainians are building defensive lines and fortifications along the line of contact, which have already proven their effectiveness in this war. Both sides oh, no, have also no. Every time I watch these videos, I, I know chat is going to be triggered. I don't give a fuck if you're triggered. Every time I watch these videos, I'm so ashamed of the West that we don't help more. We should be fucking in there Strike and helping each these motherfuckers. Military assets and civilian infrastructure in January. Makes me very ashamed. The Russians launched drones and history and will know that about us. You can say whatever you want. History books will know Unlike the previous campaign that we've been of pussies in the West. This time, Russia's main focus is not on Ukraine's energy infrastructure, but its defense industry. Since foreign military support has diminished in recent months, the Ukrainian government has been working on ramping up domestic military production. The success of these drone and missile strikes, in terms of damaging the Ukrainian defense industry, is not entirely clear. The Russians regularly report about the destruction of Ukrainian bases and military production plants, but we mainly see images and footage of destroyed residential buildings. In this period, we have seen evidence of Russia using North Korean ballistic missiles with a range of 900 kilometers. Even though North Korean missiles are not exactly precise, they can still do a lot of damage. The Russians have also started using a modified version of Shahed drones, the Shahed 238, which has a higher speed. I had to look at that drone. That is a creepy fucking. Oh, that's from Iran. $900,000 for one drone. Fuck off. Jet powered mm. drone. I had to look at that. Thank you, Anon. Holy shit, that's modern warfare right here. The Ukrainian Strategic Industries wow. Minister Kamishin announced on January 18th that Ukrainian Drone? air defense has already started using Frankensam hybrid systems based on the Soviet book launchers firing American air defense missiles and has already downed a Shahed drone from a distance of 9 kilometers. In contrast, the Ukrainians have mostly been focusing on destroying Russia's air defense and air force assets. On January 4th, Ukrainian military intelligence reported about the destruction of a Su-34 fighter jet in Chelyabinsk. Ten days later, the Ukrainians claimed the destruction of a rare and expensive A-50 airborne early warning and control plane, and the damaging of an IL-20M yeah. airborne command post over the Azov Sea. That. Patriot Pac-2 air defense missiles were most likely used in this attack. A-50s give a 200-mile range of visibility to the Russians, which are crucial in launching fighter and bomber jets in Ukraine. Now Russia has only two to eight A-50 planes left, with at least some of them requiring repair or not being flown in years. Ukrainian drones have also attacked oil and gas infrastructure, fuel depots, the Smolensk aviation plant, nice. and Shiglovsky Val plant in I'm Kula, totally biased, man. Every time they, he talks about Ukraine doing something well, I'm like happy. The strikes on oil <laughs> infrastructure up. have been particularly painful, as the nice, Russian Ministry nice, of Energy nice. reported that fuel exports- I'm so sorry, Russian viewers. Nothing against you civilians have dropped by 37% but nice. <laughs> in January 2024. On January 31st, the Ukrainians struck the Velbek airfield in Crimea, destroying a Su-30 and two Su-27 mm. jets. But how much money this war is costing? Putin invades and trillions of dollars are being burned, man. One of the more controversial episodes of the recent months took place on January 24th. A Russian IL-76 transport one paying for aircraft it. crashed in Belgorod Oblast of Russia, the Russians have stated that the plane was carrying 65 Ukrainian prisoners of war and oh. was shot down by Ukrainians. Sure. The Ukrainians have responded by claiming that the plane was carrying S-300 missiles. So far, as of early February, the Russians have not provided any evidence of the death of Ukrainian POWs. I actually saw a fire near an oil refinery near Moscow. Hand, a Ukrainian military intelligence spokesperson has confirmed that there was going to be a prisoner exchange on January 24th. Much has been said about how the war in Ukraine has transformed into positional trench warfare, in which artillery becomes extremely important. According to the Wall Street Journal, Russia fires around 10,000 shells every day against <laughs> two. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Thousand fired by the Ukraine. Well, one to five ratio, Alta, and Ukraine still holds. Ten thousand shells a day. Use, it is worth noting that while the Russians are using more artillery shells than the Ukrainians now. 
It is significantly yeah. less than Thank you, Kelly, my brother, man. It is an achievement. Especially during months. the fight for severity. I still Nets. don't know if it's an achievement According or a punishment. According to Ukrainian military intelligence official, Vadim Skibitsky, Russia produced up to 2,122,000 or 152mm artillery shells in 2023 and got 1 million more from North Korea. And they're enabled... actually genuinely dependent on North Korea, right? Like, it's not a meme. They're genuinely dependent on the Russian fucking Army North to maintain Korea. A decent firepower capacity. Best army in the world, In man. October 2023, it was reported that the European Union had supplied Ukraine with only 30% of the pledged 1 million shells. Ukraine has increased the domestic production of shells, but this is not... I sent you the video of the fire that I saw in Moscow. How fucking weird. But well, your country invaded the country, huh? I guess this is kind of something that can happen. Stay safe, John. To Stay safe, man. With the Russians. That is why Ukraine's allies have been working to ramp up their production too. For instance, the US has doubled its production to 28,000 wow. per month in October 2023, and some of it will most likely go to Ukraine once or if Congress agrees to extend the Ukraine funding. Germany has delivered 9,000 shells in 2024 already, while Britain, Latvia, and the Netherlands pledged more. Ukraine shoots 2k a day, and Germany only gives two 9,000 men. What? That's uh, that's like five days of shooting. Rounds for Ukraine too. On January 13th, the Swedish company Namo agreed to increase 155 millimeter artillery shell production for Ukraine, while the French Armed Forces Minister Le Thank you, GL the Thank plan you sir. to create an artillery coalition of 23 nations to send more artillery to the Ukrainian nice. army. Lastly, on January 23rd. NATO oh, the EU as a whole delivers all 155 millimeter artillery shells worth 1.2 billion dollars for nice. Ukraine. But the bad news is that the first batch will only arrive in late 2025. There is finally more movement in the West to send much needed shells to Kyiv, but Ukraine will need more to at least achieve parity on the battlefield. Kamishin also promised a 42 fold increase of production of ammunition and a 2.5 fold increase of production of shells. Kamishin declared that Ukraine had restarted the manufacturing of Vilka MLRS with a 130 km range and a more explosive warhead. Since 2023, Ukraine has been producing six Bodana howitzers per month. They have increased production of anti-tank missiles like Stugna P and Corsar. The minister stated that Ukraine has repaired more than 3,000 armored vehicles. Sorry, man. I want to Google something really weird. I'm about to Google something weird. Uh artillery etf does that exist aerospace and defense etf oh shit is it going well can i see that somehow i shares aerospace and defense etf uh, not even that crazy to be honest it's steady growth if you invest it you will make money hey that's a sick investment alto wow damn investing in a fucking artillery shell etf easy money alto you see it's not that hard to be a good investor Oh, they make artillery. Let's maybe invest in an ETF. Easy money, man. While also claiming a five-fold increase in their production between the spring of 2023 You see, money is burned, but look how much money is made. Yeah. yeah. According to him, there has also been a 100-fold increase in the production But who makes that money? It's the rich people that uh, have the money the to invest. The war. While Ukraine is also working it's on not the lower class, the middle classes that make money from that. warfare systems. This is decent progress in comparison with where things were. I used to be a in Lockheed, man. But, but not I, I nearly enough to ensure ago. parity with really Russia. Russia has also significantly <clears throat> increased its domestic production after losing thousands of vehicles and weapon systems in the two years of the war. Currently, Russia is turning bakeries, malls, and other civilian objects into arms production facilities. <laughs> no fucking which way, work man. In three shifts. Western sources have told Dude, the they're really Times all in on this war, bro. To Oof, come on, at, at some point, chat. Does anyone still fucking believe NATO will struggle here? The guys are on their last limb against Ukraine, Aldo. Two million shells come on, in all the guy has is a fucking nuke, bro. British Ministry of Defense stated that Russia is capable of producing at the least 100 main battle tanks per month, <laughs> a pace which allows them to overcome the massive armored losses they have been suffering in Ukraine. Both sides are also modernizing their electronic warfare capabilities and drones. Ukrainian sources have estimated the effectiveness of FPV drone usage by their operators to be at 30%, a figure which often depends on the capabilities of the unit. Again, that Poland to Ukrainian sources, done? Russia has modernized their FPV drones. Which are honest, I'm not an expert. That's why I don't understand why certain uh, defense ministers in the West are stating we should all prepare for Russian invasion. I'm not an expert. These guys probably have much more information than me, but Russia is fucking struggling against like 1% of NATO's GDP here. It's important though to prepare. It's important though to show enemies like um, Xi Jinping and Putin, hey, if you guys ever want war, we're kind of ready for it. It's an important symbol you kind of need in the West. 
Ukrainian industry has just started working on manufacturing such drones. Russian electronic warfare has also been modernized and according to the Financial Times, they are now capable of disorienting precision HIMARS and Excalibur missiles. <coughs> Meanwhile, the AFU has started using ground unmanned mine trawlers, ground oh. unmanned kamikaze vehicles, and ground kamikaze and drone stuff is the meta, man. Equipped with That's truly the meta of modern war. If I was a soldier of World War III, I'd always be looking up. And if I hear, I'm like fucking gone, bro. Also, <laughs> no. to talk about the report about the dismissal of the Ukrainian commander in chief, Zelushny. Several Ukrainian journalists broke this news, but the Ukrainian government later denied it. The Bible, However, the journalists say that. the Western media also started reporting about the imminent dismissal of Zelushny. As of February 1st, there has been no official news regarding this. It is rumored that the commander of the ground forces, Zelensky, and the chief of military intelligence, Budinov, are the main candidates to replace Zelushny. In our previous videos, we discussed the tension between Zelensky and Zelushny, and if the reports are true, the decision will be made official fairly soon. Surely it is the prerogative of the civilian government to make decisions about the country's military, but Solushny is very popular in Ukraine He's now and has solid okay. rapport with his Western It's an important thing to always switch our generals and stuff. Sometimes people are too narrow-minded, focus on too much stuff. It's important to have different views and stuff. In Kharkiv and blasts. Perhaps the Ukrainian government believes that following a failed summer counter-offensive, That's not really infighting, I think. It's very normal Still to do something like that. Still unresolved is the matter of further mobilization in Ukraine which is said to be a topic of dispute between the political and military leadership. Some claim that Zelensky is concerned with the popularity of Zelushny. If the dismissal indeed happens, we will know the reason as well pretty soon. Even though Zelushny was on good footing with his Western colleagues, his potential dismissal is extremely unlikely to have any impact on military aid from Western countries. There is still no development coming from the United States. U.S. officials have already stated that they have run out of budget to send military support to Ukraine. They need Congress to approve the budget for military support to Ukraine, which the Republican majority insists to link with the border deal. The State Department has reiterated that it will continue supporting Ukraine for as long as it takes, but added that assistance may not be at the level of 2022 and 2023. The upcoming couple of months will likely show which way it makes you hope States that Biden wins the election, with man. regards to military aid in Ukraine. On December 31st, the State Department official Victoria Newland confirmed that the United States has sent Ukraine the ground-launched small diameter bombs, which will expand the range of Ukraine's HIMARS. Expansion of long-range precision fire capabilities is a good development for Ukraine. And even better news for Kyiv is the adoption of the much-awaited EU package of support, worth 50, 50 billion, billion euros, Wow, holy shit! Uh, until 2027. Damn. For that, I, for that, I like to pay my taxes, I guess. From his demands. For that, I On guess you can take 4th, off my money. Germany delivered a new military aid package, which included a Skynex air defense system, 10 Marder infantry fighting vehicles, ammunition for Leopard 2 tanks, missiles for Iris T air defense systems. TRML-4D radars, two Vicent mine-clearing vehicles, Bieber bridge-laying vehicles, and so on. Later, and Germany so on. also <laughs> announced military aid worth 7 billion euros, nice, which included nice. ammunition for Leopard 1 tanks, part of my country. drones, and communication equipment. Later, they pledged to deliver six decommissioned Sea King Mark 41 helicopters to Ukraine. How much shit does Germany on have? On January 6th, Danish Ministry of Defense officials informed that their F-16 delivery will be postponed by mm. half a year. Initially, the delivery was expected to happen in early 2024. Yesterday, actually yesterday, I was on the... I saw a huge convoy yesterday on the highway with these guys. Shit ton of them, man. I saw a lot of them yesterday. They went south. <laughs> to Bavaria. On January 7th, the Japanese foreign minister, Kamikawa, pledged to send a drone detection system and other equipment. On January 11th, the Estonian president announced a 1.2 billion euro wow, aid package Estonia, to Ukraine. Wow, Estonia, man. You got shit country, On bro. On the same day, the Latvian president <laughs> going also pledged Anschluss. military aid, <laughs> including unnamed howitzers, anti-tank weapons, rockets, helicopters, the drones, are helping and so other much. weapons. Later, Latvia announced the creation of but a But again, imagine Russia was a neighbor of Germany. Germany would also do much more. Drones to Ukraine. On January 12th, British Prime Minister Sunak visited Ukraine and pledged 2.5 billion pounds of military support which will pay for air defense systems, long-range missiles, and artillery shells, as we mentioned before. They also signed a security agreement in which Britain committed to continue supporting Ukraine nice, militarily man. and economically. Very good news, this video. I like 16th, the news. The French Makes President me Macron stated that France will give 40 scalp long-range missiles, French equivalents of storm shadows, along with several hundred bombs. 
The French government also announced its intention to send 68 Caesar self-propelled howitzers to Ukraine and train Ukrainian soldiers, along with delivering two LRU rocket launches. The Europeans are picking up the pace to compensate Crazy for the man that all these countries like Ukraine and who's helping Russia fucking Kim Jong-un, Alter. Meanwhile, <laughs> Russia is increasing its military production, buying missiles and artillery shells from North Korea and drones from Iran, while also reportedly negotiating the purchase of missiles from the latter. The ex-president of Russia and the current deputy chair of the that Security so Council, fucked Dmitry up, dude. Medvedev, has clearly literal enemy of mankind if you walk around like this uh, um, uh, threatening nukes that often that guy is an enemy of the state and uh, of the world and the guy's always drunk dude every time there's like an interview yes yeah we're gonna use nukes Rest, russia's vision how can you take this guy serious man existence of an independent state on historical russian territories will now always be a cause for the renewal of military actions Moreover, there is a 100% probability of a new conflict, whichever pieces of paper on security the West signs with the Kyiv puppet regime. That does not exactly sound like a message of Straight peace up and openness to over here, honest though. negotiations. Russia is attacking and believes that it can outproduce the West and Ukraine. The Kremlin will hope for the fragmentation <laughs> of the Western coalition amidst Ukraine fatigue. This game makes me happy Ukraine I pay 50 in Texas, man. Hard At and least makes further defensive preparations. Let's look at the visually confirmed equipment losses of both sides documented by the Oryx military blog. As of February 1st, Russia has lost at least 2,678 tanks, 5,615 vehicles, 268 command posts and communication stations, 1,116 artillery systems and vehicles, 346 multiple rocket launchers, 102 aircraft, 135 helicopters, and 333 drones. All for what? For Ukraine what? Ukraine has lost for at least 736 what? tanks, 2,326 vehicles, 18 command posts and communication stations, 489 artillery systems and vehicles, 52 window. multiple oh. rocket launchers, 79 aircraft, 37 helicopters, and 258 drones. More episodes on this conflict are on the way, so make sure you are subscribed and press the bell button. Please consider Makes liking, me pray, subscribing, Biden commenting, and sharing. Election, it helps bro. immensely.